Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the tentative uh, outline here for Miseries and Misfortunes. We're doing character creation. Uh, we are, we've are. we decided this is the game that's going to be replacing our ongoing uh, UVG. Uh, I know my audios were a little shaky right before the break. So yeah, Miseries and Misfortunes is going to be our next game. We're also going to be changing the time uh, when we play more towards a weekend, but stay tuned to that later. Um, but yeah, this is the game, Miseries and Misfortune. It's in a physical copy of a book. And we're doing character creation. For those who don't know what Miseries and Misfortunes is, uh, this is Luke Crane's latest game, um, and it is 1648 F Paris, France simulator. Uh, so it is 17th century. Uh, it is the peak of, the, or the very, very, very end of the Thirty Years' War. It hasn't quite wrapped up yet. There's still one battle, Battle of uh, Lons, Leeds, Leons as well as the Treaty of Westphalia. Um, but yeah, a lot of religion, political, uh, social class turmoil. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna play to find out what it's like to be in Paris at this time. Answer, really, really bad. Yes, it's, it's very bad. If you want a better primer about the game and how it's set up and what it does, I highly suggest um, you all follow Adam Koble, uh, Skinny Ghost. Uh, they did a first look, or he did a first look of the game and it is, uh, it's fire. It did, it did a great job going through it all and calling out the cool stuff about it. So I, I will I will just not tread on that ground and we'll just do character creation together. But just know that it's in general, it's a D and D adjacent game. You got your stats, but you got your burning wheel uh, bits in there too. So we'll talk about that during the character creation. So we all got our books. We're all ready to go. Our PDFs. Books. I think we all have physical books. Okay, so this game I'm from PDF, but yes. Okay, this game does life paths, which uh, if if you need to know anything about me, life paths are the best uh, for me. I've decided that life. Uh, I don't know. I, I go back and forth. I was talking about this right before we went live. That I can play a game like the Black Hack. I can play a game like 316 with two stats of like fighting and not fighting. And, and love it and have a great time. Then I also want to play like Battletech and do a, a time of total war and make a character there and have modules and buy my skills five XP at a time, you know, and, and, and level those things up. And I, I go I go back and forth. But I think Traveler character creation is probably my favorite favorite setup and system. But this, this is not quite that bad. Um, you get to choose your life paths in a lot of ways based on your uh, stats. But you also are rolling to see... Um, certain bits about your character a lot. So I like that. I like I like the combination of um, choosing the best options that you can, um, uh, but as well as dealing with the hand that uh, the dice have given you. Just like any life, right? Uh, you don't have all control over everything. So anyways, let's start doing some, some care gen. So we need to figure out our motif. Yeah. And I have a suggestion if nobody has a suggestion yet. I also have a suggestion, but I'm happy to hear yours first. I have a suggestion, but go ahead. <laughs> I don't I, I come here prepared. Yeah, what's up? Okay, okay. Uh I so the deal with the motif for for general chat is that it has to be a a something that groups the characters together and keeps them together that is higher than politics or religion because you will be randomly rolling your politics and religion. So it can't just be those. So they suggest family, friendship, love, or even a mystical goal, uh, which makes me want us all to be on the search for the Holy Grail. I was going something along those. I wanted like a mystical society of like philosophers, like searching for like meeting in, I guess I had assumed that they would be nice enough to meet in parlors, but they probably aren't uh, meeting, meeting in, in whatever houses of ill repute and, and discussing the secrets of the universe, which I think works fine with the quest for the Holy Grail. Um, I think it might be possible that some of the characters have a more, uh, um, Symbolic understanding of what the Holy Grail may be. Sure, uh, for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Eric, what what were you thinking? Uh, owning a restaurant, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, or like you know a bakery um, at this time. I, are you, so a boulangerie in in late <laughs> yeah, 1600s I, France is is a nightmare of a business to run. So. Uh, we could totally play that for a couple of sessions before we all die in poverty. That's how restaurants work. <laughs> yeah, I know it's. Uh, I, although no, I, I do I do like the the uh, occult angle. Uh, that would be fun. I mostly just want to play with the magic rules. 
yeah, the magic rules are pretty great yeah. in this game. So I will, I would I be happy to run that stuff. Grant, you're okay. quiet. What do you, what do you, yeah, what do you yeah. think about this? Yeah, I was gonna say. Meanwhile, uh, <clears throat> I've read all the Three Musketeers novels about four times, and I totally want them to be the occultist philosophers, and I want it to be we meet in that guy's basement where it's like I'm part of this secret society because they're my friends, and I own the house that we meet in, or rather. I, I'm tied to the house, and it's almost like you're the, the front. front. Yeah, you're the front, yes. exactly. Oh, he's the baker. <laughs> yes. And sure. I've worked really hard to not die being a baker in yes. France during this century, yeah. and I'm very proud of it. That was actually like a musketeer storyline. D'Artagnan was like, you're going to finance my adventure. And it was his old hireling who was like... Oh, my wife's gonna kill me, but I'm gonna finance her adventure. Yeah. It's so, yeah, so so 17th century uh, tinker, crusader, soldier, necromancer. <laughs> Great, got it. Okay, hey, let's let's see how uh, horribly born we are. Spy. So yeah. Um, okay. Is that, so, all, is that all right? Yeah, so we're we're all on board with that. Yeah, of course. Someone has to has to present of yeah. The, so so we all agree that the motif there is that this should be like what we're doing is kind of frowned upon or like not necessarily that there, there's a conflict in that we have to we can't be overt about this. There's a covert. Yeah, I think element. maybe not even like frowned upon as much as like we're hunting for the holy grail. We don't want somebody else to find it first. Like okay, got to hunt for it. Like maybe this is even an absolutely fine thing to do. Is this but legitimate? Somebody else is hunting for it too. Is the Holy Grail legitimate? I, I'm a hundred percent on board for the Holy Grail, but does it exist? Like, like my heart. Like, are we playing the game that like this is a quest that won't ha like we, we will fail at? Like, I feel like we have to talk about that before we get started. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so personally, yeah, like, maybe it's like, undecided. Like right now, right in 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 real life world, no, it does not exist. Right? Yeah. I so we're at zero percent. It it exists. I feel like. Uh, we're at maybe 70, 80 percent it exists in game, you know, mm -hmm. like there is certainly a possibility that it has been destroyed or uh, is lost forever. It had or existed. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But but we're hoping to find it. We feel like uh, can I offer an alternate take? Hit it. Uh, so some like um, mystery that goes by the name, the Holy Grail absolutely yes. exists. A physical Holy Grail may or may not, like, I'm fine with those odds on the physical thing. But, like, if, if I mean, if we want to go, like, cheesy here, Da Vinci Code style Holy Grail, like, there, there is something that goes by that name that is important that we could find that I think is, like, absolutely there. We're not, like, completely on the wrong path, but there may not be, like, a literal magic cup. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's the journey that's the important part. <laughs> the real magic is the friends you make along the way. That's right. The Holy Grail was in our hearts all along. <laughs> ah, thank you, chat. You're all the best. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Okay. This is good. This is good stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm on board with this. How do we feel about... Um, should we be sticking to... when Since we're dealing with occult stuff, and I know there's a lot of references and things in this book here, um, about sort of, you know, the uh, hermetic society stuff, uh, religion. Uh, do we want any sort of, like, mythos stuff in it as well, or no? Do you want to shy, around, shy away from that? I'd prefer... I'd prefer historical only. Sure. Yeah. Like, there, there was a search for the Fountain of Youth, you know, yeah. even right. though that yeah. doesn't actually exist. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah, you yeah, want it... His, uh, historical fantasy realism. I don't know what you it wouldn't right. feel out of place right. hearing, you know, hearing about something like this in a but, history book. And they went off on this foolhardy quest type right. of right. But no, no, like, okay, okay, cool. So then, uh, cause I'm thinking about immediately, uh, just full cards in the table for people know prepping that I'm like, oh, cool. I'll maybe work with silent legions a little bit about factions in the city and, and how this is going to work. Um, and immediately I'm thinking like, what well, does that mean? I have to write up my own history of the game and my own mythos, like how that game kind of does stuff. But I'm like, that's why I wanted to ask. But no, instead I'm just going to use it as like a faction turn. Yeah, the Protestants are bad enough. They're, they're going to be hard enough for us to do. Oh with, yeah, right? the iconoclasts. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I, like, I think that's... the game absolutely says that there are 
some mystical things and that those can actually like make a difference on the real world. I think that's absolutely in play, Yeah. but I don't think we necessarily need, like if anything, I'd prefer to pick up little bits and pieces of like actual history that we can find along the way, as yeah. opposed to having kind of our own like mythos going and yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Awesome. I'm, I'm in for that as well. And we're thinking that magic is going to be hard, right? It's not you're oh, yeah. going to work for it, right? Are we are we doing the thing like we spoke about before? About oh like yeah, fighting. You're like you're fighting for the scraps. You you stab a dude over like someone's margin note somewhere. Oh yeah, right? that's that kind of stuff. That's exactly what I'm and, and compiling all of that together to get the one clue. Yeah, and yeah. Then we'll, okay. yeah. Oh yeah. So we'll cast the spell and end the game. So it's a, so it's a long. Okay, so we're 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 thinking that this is a long burn occult game. Yes. Where, okay. Um, Grant, is that is that cool with you? Yeah, Grant, are you? It is beyond cool for me. Okay, okay. this good. is almost literally my life. <laughs> <laughs> Grant fighting for scraps of adventure notes on the on the back of napkins. I used to. I I was training to be a professor of ancient texts for an institute of religion. This is literally my life. Where I'm like, okay, so, perfect. Right. Is this written in Kinea form, or what? What you should? Oh like, yeah. I'm I'm so here for this. And, right. No, you're gonna be. And everything I was interested in is like insane yeah. that shit okay. stuff. Okay. Cool. 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 So, so then I def uh, I definitely okay. So then obviously obviously some a lot of the stuff that needs to come up here is that I have to come up with. Um, I definitely need to go back and and read more of the late Arthurian stuff. Yeah. About and and tracking down who's the one who almost had it, Galahad. Uh yeah. I think it was Galahad who was Galahad was transfigured. The, uh, Percival like, came. Oh, was really it Percival? Close. It was Percival. Percival twice almost got the, the got the, the uh, wasteland. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, there was like a near death experience, and that's when they got the vision of where it is. Right. Cool. So like the notes of Saint Percival, you know, like that, like that type of yeah. stuff, and like following, mm -hmm. like so, like finding that stuff. So the, sort of the Da Vinci Code of like following the trail of these notes and these margins. So like there was some buddy or some other historians. Like I love the idea of multiple other scholars uh, throughout history have tried, and so you're trying to find their notes. So you want like Pagliacci's uh, notes and trying to synthesize them with Umberto's, uh, you know, stuff and like yeah. that, those types of problems too, right? That's sort of and ultimately culminating in, into success. Like that's yes. that's what we want, right? I'm in. Okay, cool. So I know we're talking a lot about, but this is this is part of session zero, right? So like, I want to get an idea of a tone for it too. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm I'm happy with this. This is this is the stuff that I want. Um, are you cool? Are we cool with doing a lot of stuff about? Um, I like the idea of like more of the formalized occult. Mm -hmm. So I like the ideas a lot of um, like, I know there's a lot of list of books and stuff like that in the game as well, but like, I love the idea of those books, notes, margins, things have terms like, mm -hmm. like at the academical notification of, of certain things, right. That, that you're, that are tracking, being tracked down. There's a formalization uh, to, to sort of some of the occult. And that some people might have different names because it's a cult and you don't really know, right? But the idea is that they'll be transposed. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We're on board here. Okay, awesome. Uh, this is this is good stuff. All right, let's start making characters. Great. Uh, unless there's anything else that I'm missing, right? No, we'll, we'll roll some characters and we'll decide that this is never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. We'll, we'll die. One, one thing at a time, though. Quality of birth table, right? Cream. Christ rules everything around me. <laughs> the subtext of this game. <laughs> Get the grail. Okay. All right. You want to roll these simultaneously? Like, how, how do you want so, to run it? Yeah, so uh, I think we do stats. Do we? Yeah, does anybody want no, to? No, like, we start out with quality 3D, of birth. 3d6 oh, quality yeah. of birth, man. Okay. Page 119. Okay. I'm on this. My quality of birth is not going to be great. No, peasant. You're a peasant. You're a felon. Peasant. Okay. Ha! I'm a commoner. <laughs> what are you all doing looking for the grail? Are you under the, the table? What the hell are you doing? Okay. Yes. That's <laughs> why so we got a bunch of these commoners looking for the grail. Okay. Awesome. Well, we agree that we're in Paris, right? That's That was a concession we're in oh, Paris. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The sure. urban setting of it. Okay. Okay, good. All right. That's good. Quality of birth, right? Um, 3d6, yep, no, no noble at all. Uh, to get a noble, you have to get at least a 15. Or no, 16. You are. Not even close. We are in the average for it, though. This yeah. is this is a pretty average set of people. Awesome. 
No problem. Oh. So I'm only taking minus two on my wealth roll. I'll be taking minus three. Uh, just so everyone knows, uh, the table of con or not table of contents, but the agenda items for character creation, quality of birth table, your wealth, your property, your dependents, and the dependents' relationships, and then debts. Um, your life is all about being s suffered, pressed down upon, right? And that whole time, you're going to try to eke out finding the Holy Grail. That's going to be this game. Okay, so let's do some wealth stuff. 11. Poverty. 11 3. Perfect. Oh, man. Poverty. <laughs> Hell yeah. Grant, you in poverty too? Yes. Or are you in subsistence? <laughs> okay. No. No, no, no. We all, all right, got we're poverty. All poverty. Okay. That's us. <laughs> it brings us together. The body of Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Property. This is when we're going to do better. Oh, my God. We are totally all going to be homeless. It's oh, gonna be great. How funny would be if you all are homeless, fighting for scraps, looking for the Holy Grail. It'd oh. be wonderful. As well. I know, it would be awesome. Fifteen with a minus three. Whoa! Six. What? That is great. I have a fortune. No, you you roll. It's two d <laughs> six. It's two d six, Grant. Not it's three. Two, oh, I'm sorry. It's still twelve minus it's three. 12. So it's twelve. It's twelve. You got a manor, Grant. You have a manor. It's great. <laughs> it was destined that I would have a house. I got a city. I what? got a uh, city home. I rent. <laughs> what the hell? All right, hold on. So, so I have to, I have to figure out how does a peasant. That's amazing. Come into having a manor. Thank you very much. I'm a, I'm commoner. a commoner. I'm not a. I'm a commoner. We're as not well. peasants. Right. I'm a fishmonger. It's family property. Great grandpa Dupont. Hates everything that I've been doing though. I've got debts. I got oh, six man. obligation, man. Yeah, I'm gonna be pretty high with that. That's. I have seven obligation. I get to add one d four to Wait, my wealth. Uh, don't you don't you subtract for the property? Yeah, I, I subtracted three for mine and nine. so did Grant. Right, so nine. You have a manor, so you have four. You have. Four. Oh, but then no, he but when 12. he rolled a twelve and yeah. I rolled an eleven minus our threes. Oh my god! Yeah, you have so much obligations. Okay, so the, I guess this is the manner. Are we? So we again, we agreed these are these are in town. They're in the city. Yeah, yeah. City home okay. in Paris. All right, you all are all right outside the graveyard. Yeah. My goal is going to be to move in with one of these guys. Yeah. I think you oh, you paying rent. To you rent a room from us. I'm, I'm I'm paying rent. Oh, maybe I'm, I'm renting from you. You yeah, you're probably probably renting at the manor. <laughs> Not for rent. I, I don't think know. I'm gonna... Would you stoop so, down? So the question is, so it it's, says plus one d four to wealth. When does that come into play? Uh, keep just keep track of it. Yeah. Okay. And at the very end, you're gonna have a big wealth rating thing. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So. Um, okay. Are we ready for dependence? Uh, I, ready, ready is probably not the this word. Is a, this is a d20. Uh, first, it's 1d4 minus 1 for the amount. Yes. But there's some bad kerning, so it looks like it says roll 1d4 for a mount. <laughs> um, but, it's yeah. Not that, it's not that bad in the physical book. Okay, I have one dependent. Whew. Getting off easy. Same. I'm nervous. I hope I have negative one. Oh, you're Hopefully. living in a manor. They're I all living there. We all have one. We Wait, all have you. one. Only one dependent. Mine's my infirm aunt. Ugh. Widowed infirm aunt. That's right. Mine is my elder sister. I have a younger brother. Ah. Oh, and we, we can additionally roll 1d6 on the relation subtable for uh, if they are blood, in-law, yeah. or adopted. Uh, it's my sis elder sister-in-law. Same. Uh, blood. Yeah. How much younger? Um, twins. Five minutes. No. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I. I. Let's keep. I assume. I assume 
they were the youngest child. I want to say like seven years apart. Eric, do you want to go through like all of this and then go back and yeah, talk about them? Yeah, we can, we can okay. flesh these out later. Uh, we, you don't have to be super uh, like tied down about what how old your your younger brother is right now. I am owed money. You. Ah! Oh yeah, man. Maybe I'm, I'm a debt. money changer. Maybe that's. I have why. a small debt. Oh. You have rent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's borrowing to pay his rent. Debt. So my total obligations is five. Ouch. Uh, all our nationalities are French. We're not going to do anything weird, right? No, we're we're oh. doing we're doing just doing French. Okay. Uh. Although I would definitely play this game set somewhere else. I am Jewish. But that's not right now. I'm Catholic. How in the world are we getting along? <laughs> Look, some things are bigger. Then. I'm also Catholic. Why do you want the Holy Grail? <laughs> hey, man, it was connected to a Jew. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Okay. I want to. I want to rediscover some heritage pieces. He was a weirdo, but you know. All right. Also, probably worth some money. <laughs> we we believe he was a great teacher, just not the Messiah. So you That's know, right. still still nice. It was a really nice cup. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, let, let's the avoid museum. the because uh, it's a really nice cup. <laughs> it's just the cup of a carpenter. <laughs> oh gosh! I oh. am politically ignorant. I'm scared to death to roll on this table. I don't know what a frontier is, but I am one. Uh, That's right. It's the yeah, best. It's a rebel. You were a rebel. Oh, I finally got something I'm happy about. You're you're <laughs> you're a rent you're a rent paying person who resents everyone. Uh, for oh, you, 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 you resent the political, the current political establishment. Well, you hate your two friends because they've got really nice houses for <laughs> no real reason. You're like, <laughs> and you're, this system you're... is broken. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a firebrand. That's good. Oh, this this is so good. Roll three d six per ability in order. Grant's a traditional right. royalist. Of course he is. Well. Oh, that's so good. Uh, strength, intelligence, wisdom, dex, con, charisma. I'm not going to roll them in that order because I played too much old old D and D. Are those actually the the ones, or did he mess with things? They're that way order on the character sheet. I don't have my character sheet open. Okay, but it is the normal six D and D things. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do them my order order because I'm just keeping um, time. Do we want to? So everyone who who who's owed. So you're owed. Someone's owed a debt, right? Me. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think one of the player characters is the one the debt's owed to you. So I think we're no, gonna make I don't a, think we're, so. we're gonna make a character for that. I want, unlike, um, maybe the UVG. I kind of want this game to be a little bit more sprawly. Uh, where we have other extra non-player characters out there that are interacting with you all. Yeah, that's kind of important in this game. It's a, it's a city. It's like the biggest city in Europe. Why well, not this time? Ooh, ooh. About, what is it like? Like 150 years before? Huge. I don't know. Uh, a little less. Okay. Paris is still gin ginormous, though. Yeah. But this was before the redesign of it, right? That's what yeah. I'm thinking of. Yeah. All right, so we're rolling, rolling our stats. 15 dex and whiz. 5 charisma, 7 intelligence. It's going to be a good time. So all my rolls went by, and then I'm deciding to uh, lower my dex from 12 to 10 to raise my whiz from 8 to 9, because that does not change my dex modifier but it does change my wisdom modifier. Mm. Um, and I figure if I'm going to be searching for the Holy Grail, I shouldn't probably be doing that at minus one wisdom. Um. So uh, the beginning parts of the book tells you a little bit about um, like if you 
playing someone who's Jewish, uh, playing someone who's Catholic, as well as your political affiliations. Um, yeah, okay. I'm going to try very hard to play a Jewish character kindly. Uh, Please, yeah. Should not be an issue. I did randomly roll that people owe me money. Uh, so don't give me a hard time. It is random rolls. It's just uh, kind of this, this weird thing. Uh, yeah. If we, <clears throat> if we want to, we can always change it. I think, I think it'll be okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I was looking at what front doors do and stuff specifically. And yeah, you're very, very, very much like we're taxed enough already. Okay. Which is true at the time because you all are oppressively taxed because the rich literally pay no taxes. Huh. Sounds familiar. Yeah. Uh, so since I'm smart, I do get to read uh, additional languages from the nationality list. Uh, of, I'm, of course, picking Latin uh, because I'm Catholic. Uh, and I'm not sure what else to pick. I'm not quite there yet. Okay. Uh, your language rating is three out of six. For French. Latin, Spanish, English, Low German, and German. Um, hmm. You so you chose Latin. You pick another one. Yeah, because I have a thirteen int, so I get uh, can read and write native language plus two additional languages from nationality list. Uh, did we? Did you skip choose life paths and stuff? Uh, that comes after you determine languages. Not, Not in my book. book. No, it's governing or abilities the and then choosing life paths. Oh, huh. I must have an older edition. Uh, page uh, one twenty. Page one twenty three. Yeah, page one twenty three for me says governing abilities and then determine languages in my PDF. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Uh, maybe maybe <coughs> we'll put a pin a in time. it. Maybe we'll put a pin in it, and we'll we'll see what's going on uh, with right. life paths, and then maybe something will become clear. Power level, though, are we going to play default yeah. one life path and advance to third? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Uh, what's everyone else think? Some of the life default? paths require you to uh, ch choose your languages, so that might be how he how he did it before. Everybody else cool at normal power level? Yeah. So yes. we're just playing some real average Joes and who are who are going for the ground. Emergent. Well, that's a shame. Somebody gonna be a fact totem? On screen. Judd sent us. I have to switch to the UVG, but Judd sent us an image of Lancelot at the chapel with the Grail, which I think is extremely oh, relevant. So, awesome. so good. So now I get to do a lot of uh, little pen dragon y uh, yeah. references. Here for you, man. I'm looking out Thank for you. you. Phaedra, are you going to be a Jesuit? Ooh, that's tempting. Because I feel like it's it's pretty legit for what you're what you're going for, right? Yeah, but I also really hate the well. I guess I could be a Jesuit who hates the rich. That's not the worst. Oh yeah, that's that's legit. I may be a Jesuit who hates the rich. Uh, being getting to be both religious and uh, like hating the rich works for me. I was also thinking about being an occultist just because because yeah. it kind of fits. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm I mean, smart enough to have Latin, so you always got to play the mage. I mean, it's kind of what we're here to do. Um Oh, but Jesuits do get prayers. You get prayers. You can marry people. <laughs> and I can marry people, but I can't marry myself. I mean, I, or your spells fail. I, I I cannot marry. I also cannot marry myself. Yeah. <laughs> very very clear. <laughs> Jesus was very explicit about this. Uh, 
I'm, I'm kind of locked down here because I'm not going to be able to have Latin. My intelligence has a minus one. Hmm. Oh, but the study of demons is so good. Though, actually, I could start out as a Jesuit and eventually somehow figure out to be, that would be really interesting. Right? Um, ooh, that is, huh. You can abjure the works of Satan. Keep that in mind. <laughs> oh. Okay, right now, I think I'm going to end up being a passer. A ferryman. Grant, a smuggler. Grant, Grant, a smuggler. Just a smuggler. <laughs> well, that's a rather crass way of putting it. <laughs> I am plain spoken. But yeah, I feel like I feel like we're gonna need somebody that's a little sneaky and uh, boaty. And uh, that does make sense. My other options are, you know, I could be a sailor straight up or a soldier. I don't really want to play a soldier. No, I don't think that's the, the kind of game we're we're doing. Nah. This is gonna be much more urbany, like investigation, life, slice of life kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, factotum might be good, but that doesn't, I don't, yeah, it doesn't feel the hard part, the hard part. What's the ability I've got? Maybe I do want to be a factotum because they're sneaky too. Yeah, I think I'm going to be a Jesuit. I am extremely happy about this. So, yeah, I'm going to be a factotum. I'm trying to remember life paths work. Like at the first level, you get all the things, then at each level, you choose one. You advance it to third level. Okay. Uh, check your requirements, select gear options, choose a name, mark the skills associated with your life path. Uh, see the set skills, which in the, the physical book is at 124. Okay. Um, so I, I do all the things that it says under Jesuit at first level. And then I advance it twice. Yeah. Okay. So many cool things. I have the idea that I might take petty nobility, where the idea is you're not a noble at all. It's you might become a noble one day. In other words, there's some awful work that the nobility doesn't want to take care of. So they say, you're a capable peasant. We're going to give you some responsibility in, in the name of your great grandfather, whose manor you're living in with all these debts you're racking up. Um, so if, if you think about that, that might be, um, I might be the in charge of laundry for the military or something like that. But it's just, I've been given some responsibility. And we would make use of my manner uh, to probably see out the task. It might be that we have to quarter soldiers. Um, but I'm thinking uh, if I have the house as a resource, it might be uh, that the local leadership, the local nobility is like, we need to lean on this guy uh, and make use. Uh, if not that. Um, so you are a patsy for someone... Yes, essentially. Sure. Mm, well, maybe Community. I should be a clerk then. Oh, but we've already... Uh, nah, nah, we've already got Sage. If we've got Sage, we don't need a clerk. I'm 27 at the start. Say so you're the DMV desk of uh, the manor. Checking in. All right, let me... I am...
32. 20. Oh. So there's this young noble that we're... Uh, huh. <laughs> it's worse than that. I'm like the Rex Center coordinator, and I, <laughs> I'm not actual nobility. I'm just... Yeah, he's he does things for us. <laughs> oh, I'm liking that I went with Jesuit because I get a whole bunch of um, skills that are governed by intelligence, which I have plus one in. So I'm I'm starting out with a whole bunch of things before I even advance at two out of six. Uh, theology, mathematics, astronomy. Um, Oh, I speak a bunch of languages. Cheats and hacks, man. It would make absolute sense that you would be renting a room. You're my tutor. <laughs> 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 yeah, I totally agree, Roger. Somebody owes me money because otherwise I'll I'll make things happen that they don't want to make happen. Hmm. When I get to lecture people, this is great. <laughs> and also in the game. <laughs> All general skills begin at one sixth. Oh, I get to start with a cassock. The experience triggers for life paths are awesome. Oh, they're so uh, good. So you know, uh, people who are listening along, um, that most of them are all narrative-based. Uh, so for example, like a soldier, uh, in order to gain some experience, you would have to break in and steal the valuables or stores of food, despite the protests of the owner. Uh, they're all designed to uh, help inspire me to come up with ideas for where the game should go. I'm here for it. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Pray in my hour of need. That one's easy. <laughs> right, mercy or clemency to your enemies. Uh, personally, I'm pretty okay with that. Educate another in the mysteries of the faith. Sounds like I got that set up with somebody in the, the party, so to speak. Convert another to Catholicism. Oh. Good ooh. luck. Grant, what, what religion did you end up rolling? I'm Catholic. Well, it's yeah. just me then, Sage, unless you uh, find an NPC. There will be NPCs. Oh, there will be a lot of NPCs. Never leave the house. <laughs> Is that one of your level ups? Let me see what we got. Oh, what name? I rolled randomly. Oh, okay. One, two, three. Yeah, a lot of the game will revolve around... Uh, the factions and groups would be plenty of people to interact with. Oh my gosh, I got the one that I was thinking anyway. Okay. Nice. Well, Ignatius. Wonderful. Uh, and I don't know how much Gnosis I start with, but it's 1d6 per starting level. That's right. Hacks and cheats, man. <laughs> it is recommended that the young priest limits himself to the Pater Noster, Confession, Holy Communion, Last Rites, Marriage, and Sanctify Water until he better learns the mysteries of the faith. I'm not that kind of uh, young priest. That's for that's for lesser priests. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man, this is so good. Um, oh, God, finding the grail. Oh, gosh, okay. I've got to roll for my HP. Um, two! The fewest I can have. Uh, and then I get to level up, which is... Um... <laughs> You're doing oh. the two HP? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, when I level up, I gain <laughs> zero or one HP. I'm trying to figure out the, the way to describe that in the roll command. Hope there's no D three minus one. Oh, yeah. how many HP do you say? I'm gonna gain 
zero or one HP per level. So roll D two minus one. No, just just that roll is... a, just roll a D two, and that's zero or one, right? Oh, one, yeah. is, one is zero, two is one, or whichever way you want. Sure. To. That's, that's a D two minus one. Minus one, I get one HP, and then I get zero HP. So I have three HP. Yep. Oh, this is going to be great. Okay, and then I get to level up. And so each time you level up, you get to choose one fewer thing. I knew there was some rule around this. So each time you level up in the same life path, you do not get all the benefits again. You have to choose um, one to not get, basically. And that goes up each time. Oh, my God. These tables for people are wonderful. I'm going to have to automate them. In roll twenty as rollable table, so I can just yes. quickly generate people. You just know how I like doing that. That's like my favorite thing to do in role playing games. Is click the generate NPC button. Love it. Oh man. There's still a lot of things to do after life paths. Yep. Same name as a uh, Porthos yeah. second there. Wooston. There's no there's no character sheet in this book, right? I didn't miss that, right? I downloaded uh No, there's no character sheet sheets. in the book. Okay. It's just the PDF. I'm gonna worry about I'm gonna worry about those abilities later. Just do the ones that require rolling. Um, Yeah, plus one for every level. Yeah. <clears throat> um, if we need uh, some, some history, like character context and stuff like that, it's, rec it's suggested by Luke that each advancement in your life pass um, had events corresponding to it that helped build up your backstory. So let yeah, me know definitely. if there's anything. Yeah. I immediately have an idea for that. To help that out. Right. Gonna go rely on uh, my my favorite table maker, the proper that stuff. All right. Eric, have you already uh, done your behind the scenes roles for our age and mortal coil and stuff? No, I have not. Okay. So for me, well, when you are you you know what we all are anyways, right? Uh yeah, it's your your age is a factor to that, right? Uh yes. no. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Well, it's 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 in the same section. Okay. Um everybody I need everybody's uh, we have two commoner. We have two commoners and a peasant, right? Or two peasants yep. and one commoner. Yep. Oh no, no. Sage is a peasant. I'm and a peasant. The, the, the other two of us are commoners. Yeah. You're in need to know quality of birth, wealth class, and starting life path. So I am. Uh, yeah. Let me roll for you first, uh, Adam. And I whisper yeah. the GM so chat can see it, but um, you won't. I will not look at the video. Uh, ha, nobody watches this video, so it's fine. <laughs> and here you go. Commoner, poverty, factotum. Mouston, the factotum.
Oh, and we each need to um, increase our starting age by two. Right, because we're two levels in. Yep. So I'm 34, which is the same age I'll turn this year. Huh, I'm playing like a Catholic version of myself in France. Good enough. <laughs> uh, 29 years old myself. It's younger than my brother. Twenty-two. Oh no! Huh. Uh, I need to edit your character sheet for a second, Adam. I need to. Add... I will save. Give me a moment. Because I'm going to put stuff into the GM notes. Yeah, I get that. I'm not sure. I will. I can I'm do that. Copy. I just, I just want to make sure that you're not in a in a field or anything like that when I hit edit. I am in the bio and info, but I copied. Okay. So go for it. So after seeing how this all shook out, I actually decided to um, make an additional two to one change to my stats and knock my strength down to eleven, which means it's now a zero. In return for getting my constitution to a nine, so it's now zero instead of minus one because I was about to um, be down to like one hit point. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I need that con to be a zero modifier, which means now I'm down to only one positive modifier. Gee, thanks Luke. Uh, yeah, you almost died in character creation. Yeah, pretty close. <laughs> Worth it. I make that joke because I love Traveler. It's so it's good. Fun. It's a press your luck. It's, it's great. <laughs> It's a press your luck roll and write game. Yeah. I'll be right back down. Okay. Um, let's see. We have an, we have two peasants, right? In poverty. Right? Those are the you two? Uh your, your quality of birth and wealth class. A peasant in poverty, yes. Grant, you're a peasant in I'm a commoner in poverty. I'm a peasant. Got it. I need to edit your sheet in case you're in anything. All right, let me save. Yeah. Oh, gonna edit it. Put it in the GM notes. I am forbidden by law from making a profit in trader commerce. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Right. Oh, geez. This was that was a big deal. Um that the even even in Italy, like for hundreds of years, that's why the, the Florentines like figured out uh, ways to work with the church to say like, well, it's technically a risk and it's not a guaranteed thing. And like, oh, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, usury and all that kind of stuff are, are big deals. Um, let's see here. I haven't actually rolled for my wealth yet. You didn't roll for your wealth? I thought you did. Like way. I, I got my wealth class. I haven't rolled for my actual wealth. Oh, right. Yeah. Because now I'm trying to figure out my reputation. Well, that, I. Yeah. Okay. And if I'm understanding this right, or the intention, um, I am also a woman disguised as a man. Like I rolled for my name and so I Googled the name and there is this entire history of uh yeah this this woman whose father died. But I think I feel like you're not you don't have to play a historical character if you don't want to. 
No, I'm not. But uh, I rolled a, a feminine name. But um, you could definitely do that. Sage, have you edited uh, your character sheet at all? Okay. Yeah, I want to be Philip though. Can you save it so I can cons- edit it? Oh, there you go. Uh, you you certainly yeah. don't have to roll your name. Save it all right. No, I, I I get that, but I also like discovering a character. I've oh yeah, lots totally. Of female characters, but I I see Philippe. Okay. And I really see myself as opposed to a a a, a woman. I really see this sucker <laughs> with the younger brother and the debts. So this will be a masculine presenting yeah. character named Philippe. Doomed, doomed to fail. Okay, mortal coils are set. Excellent. And by excellent, cool. I mean, oh no. They're locked in. Um, hit points, will, defense, morale. Reputation. Oh, they're all set. Um, let's see here. You could get, uh, don't forget a free item from the equipment list. If you haven't done so already. Starts on page 169. I mean... I would I would hope that you would pick something like I don't wait I don't think you can I don't think you have to pick something like ammunition or anything. Uh, you can you could I don't know why you would. I mean, uh, I would certainly buy a powder keg. <laughs> that is my only item. <laughs> oh, it says like uh, there's a note there about exorbitant items. Yeah, I think that that makes more sense. Uh gonna get the fat goose best in the market it's my pet we're not allowed to eat them no your brother thinks otherwise (sighs) already ate them (laughs) yeah yeah, your brother's definitely we'll figure out we're gonna have to figure out your brother i have brothers and i already know this scoundrel this freeloader Oh, actually, so sorry, I didn't read the whole note. Truly exorbitant items that are far above your station, like a black Andalusian courser, invite trouble. Be forewarned that the plot will likely revolve around the ownership of such a magnificent steed for a session or two. So you can choose any free item, but the more ridiculous you get, the more likely you're setting up problems for yourself. Yeah. I mean, if I know my history right, a a musket and a horse are your most expensive things. So that that's that flies right with me. Oh man. What are you doing? Where are you keeping this horse? <laughs> <laughs> He's renting at the I, uh I didn't say I was gonna have one. I just said Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well I have I start with a nag. No oh, nag. Oh. Old daffodil. <laughs> oh, I could start with one pound of sugar. Um, Let's start with enough. For I'm gonna befriend this horse or die trying. <laughs> <laughs> I could start with two lean chickens. Oh, useful. Well, that's that's the entire essential tension of this game. <laughs> <laughs> Just holding two chickens by the <laughs> neck. <laughs> like everyone wants the chickens. I have shoes. It's uh, a Luke game, and I started with shoes, and I didn't even have to pay for them. Man, I was really hoping there would be like some sort of interesting books on the equipment list, and there's not. No, Acqui- uh, no. Honestly, acquiring books is going to be a a big part of the game. I know, but given that I could start out with like. The the horse that everybody's gonna care about. I thought I could start out with a book that everybody would care about. Yeah. Um, but no. Huh. Man. I don't even need like occult named books. I need like religious named books and and certain like uh like not mem- what's another word for memoirs. Those are those are in that list, man. Oh, yep. Yeah. 
Apocrypha. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Never mind. That that list has everything you oh, wow, might this, ever yeah, want. Yeah, this list goes on. All right. It's enormous. Wonderful. You know, not every book's in Latin and stuff like that, too. Like, there's plenty That's of right. books in English. Oh, man. That's part of why I speak so many languages. Though, I admit, I went higher. I, I stopped picking up more languages oh. at some point. Oh, man. What if... Okay. Uh, I think as a way to tie this in, uh, I'm immediately thinking that you should start about knowing a book or maybe even possession of a book that would lead to other things. But it's in Hebrew. <laughs> of course it is. Uh, it's in like, like a language you don't have or something like that. And you're like, oh, what the hell? Yeah, no, um, I do not have Hebrew. That was that, not that a language. Might work, that might work pretty well. Oh, I forgot to subtract. My wealth is actually one. Okay, that makes more sense. Wealth rating 16. Oh, so there is, um, oh no, I'll figure that out in a second. Yeah, okay, so I've decided what my special um, personal item is. It is Le Loop, a, fashionable, a fashionable mask for women. Um, I think my Jesuit has been uh, struggling with his uh, vows and has a memento from some noble woman that he is uh, infatuated with. Infatuated with. Um, oh. It is a very expensive thing. Fleabag. To We're playing Fleabag. <laughs> 17th century Fleabag. Oh, no. <laughs> this is good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, good. so the question that I did have, let me let me find so the life good. path to make sure I can't answer this for myself. That's um, so good. That's so good. I'm going... Oh, my God. Oh, I think I think that's... That'd be a really fun little trait is that people are like find you incredibly attractive. <laughs> like, that's I, I don't have very high time. charisma, but I think that actually works out perfectly. Like I have a very average charisma. I think he may be good looking and have not a very strong, not a very personable personality. He is like obsessed with the Holy Grail and um, stuff like this. And just like, yeah, the, the women come around like flirting with him and he is like, can I interest you in a lecture about the Holy Grail? Um, yeah. Uh, so there's a thing in um, you're like you're like the hot professor that everybody is like wants to take your class about about. No one really cares about the Holy Grail. Uh -huh. like, yeah. And he's totally oblivious to it. Totally. <laughs> um, but I think for the for the the mask that he does have. Uh, that one he is like struggling with a little bit more. He's not yeah. quite as oblivious to That's that your one. Cross to bear. Okay. It, yeah, this mask. Um, it, I think it's like a, a souvenir from some ball or something. That, oh, totally. Yeah. Um, okay, so there's a note here in uh, precedence. Your precedence is based on birth quality or station. It can change as you rise or fall in station. For example, by becoming a Jesuit. So I'm a peasant who became a Jesuit. But there's nothing in the Jesuit life path that tells me to adjust my precedent or anything. So I'm not sure if I should have a higher precedent or not. Um, no, I don't think you do. Okay. okay. So I, I, I didn't gain anything by becoming a Jesuit. Great. I don't think that's an oversight. I think that people will talk over you and you have to defer. Sure. So, for my starting item, and this might be a little on the nose, but it's my first time playing the game. Being a petty noble gives me the right to bear a sword, and I think I'm going to take the sword. It's not the most expensive item that I would already have, uh, but I think it's important. Like, I have other things that are more expensive than a sword uh, as part of my starting equipment, um, being a petty noble. But it's like, I have the right to bear a sword. Uh, most of the petty noble abilities uh, deal with their dueling. Uh, so I think I'm going to have one. Oh, yeah. You should definitely have a dueling sword. Here's a yeah, question. Um, but I wear everywhere. Church. Uh, so uh, we are playing some quasi-historical game. 
I'm willing, so I'm, I'm willing to bend some rules here, but I don't know if there was anything about the role of women in society and how we're going to handle that. Hmm. Um, if there's dials, I kind of, it can go either way. It doesn't have to be historical. Right. I don't, I don't want it to be, have, have to be historical. Um, the big thing I'm thinking of right now would be because I'm I kind of I wanted to roll a couple of these things on this table here for this character that is giving uh, Sage's character such a hard time. Sure. And I got a minister or judge, which is awesome. I mean, I I think we can uh, assume that there are exceptional circumstances where something could happen. Like there's, yeah. yeah no. I mean, I think. Oh yeah. No, I'm, that's it. Makes me think that this person's also married. And like it's forbidden both ways. Yeah, I think that that's very possible. I mean, there's. I think we can be both historical and assume that weird things happen. Like there's, I don't know. I've been playing Civ recently, and there's like Jedwiga, the the female king of Poland. Like, stuff happens. I'm sure there was some kind of like uproar about it, and then it was resolved through some legal argument. And yeah, yeah. perfect. Oh, I rolled 2d6 for God. Uh oh. Even better is that they're Lutheran. Oh, no. Yes. Oh. You don't get to choose who, you, who loves you. Uh huh. Oh, that's good. Oh. Okay. So I'm, I, I'm fine keeping my presidents, but um, because I had the option to, I'm also asking Luke because I'm curious if that is like an intentional, like, yeah. Um, and just because it does actually play into uh, like duel of wit, basically. Um, and uh, it could actually matter. Like if I get priest precedents, then we're, we're going first in duel of wits a lot. And if I don't, we're going to go and last into a a lot. Um, oh yeah. Uh, this will be a, there will be a lot of dual wits in this game. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. So like, uh, I'm, I, I think I'm curious what the answer is, and then I'm fine making our own call on top of that. But especially since uh, you know, kind of like we talked about with um, UVG, like leaving an artifact that other people can find. I'm curious to know, you know, if. Uh, yeah, like if we're drifting or if this is as written. Sure. Uh, I think a clarification makes perfect sense. I mean, we're also, we're, we're pretty much out of time anyways. Yeah. Um, I know we have, we have the last like 20% of our characters to kind of wrap up here. So what I'm thinking is that maybe we should get a good stopping point of a good section for our characters now, uh, get additional clarification, think about it, finish it up, and then we'll just recap in the future. Mine is actually pretty much entirely done. Yeah, like you're, you're I, I only just done. need to like talk things over with folks, but I think I'm I'm set. Yeah, um, let's just have a little bit more uh, context from everyone else where everyone else is at. Great. I know we've been hearing about your character a lot, Sage. Uh, Adam or Grant? Grant, I'm I'm pretty far along. Um, I'm gonna go back through, but uh, I like the idea of this. A uh, petty noble defender of the realm with the younger sibling who has a manor, a little bit of debt, yeah. um, and uh, they're young and impressionable compared to everyone else. You know, for context for the audience, when the Three Musketeers' first novel begins, D'Artagnan is 18 years old. He's kind of looking up to these guys that yeah. are 
you know, approaching their 30s or in their 30s, and he's kind of a spring chicken. So my character isn't much further along than that. I have to come up with the people who you are looking up to. Mm -hmm. But you you chasing after the real nobles it seems to be like a thing, which I'm into. Or at least keeping up appearances. Yeah, totally. I, I have to keep up appearances. Yeah. Okay, good. My first goal is to get nicer clothes because these are out of fashion. Right. Um, awesome. That that makes perfect sense. Because I know so much of this game is going to be orbiting around our quest to, to pursue the Holy Grail. Um, but it, it's going to be also my job as GM to offer uh, adver you know adversaries and conflicts that keep wanting to pull you out of it. Right? Of, of just... You, you can't spend all your time looking for the grail. Other things keep taking up your attention. If oh, someone just rid me of this this troublesome noble so I can spend more time reading my books and collections and meeting and discussing what these margins say. Those types of problems, right? And dealing how far. Uh, so, yeah. This, 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 what's, what's formulating in my brain about that? So that works very well. Um, good. Good, 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 good. So the factotum is... So, so while Grant is kind of uh, sucking up to the nobles to try and try and get some serious position here, uh, the factotum is kind of the quiet hand behind uh, things actually happening in the city. I make important deliveries, discreetly relay vital messages, knock down people who insult the person that I'm attached to. Uh, so much more quiet, spy crafty. Uh, person taking care of my noble than somebody. So yeah, I, I feel like it's. You're the fixer. I, I could, I could very well have stumbled across something very interesting related. It's amazing. To... You're a fixer. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, you're the go. Pretty soon, I'm gonna have to take the blow or the blame for the person that I'm attached to. Yeah, I mean, you're you're the perfect person because I mean, in this in this world, like being Jewish in in 17th century France is you're basically already like not in a great spot and so you're kind of a great not like shadow runner but you know uh someone who's deniable uh, mm -hmm. to a lot of people and a good go-between totally uh, that's that's really really interesting so that's that's my deal i don't care about politics i haven't paid especially when it comes to money and like yeah mm -hmm. like like real serious deals where blackmail and things can come in involved is my where my brain's going yeah right? people owe me money yeah oh it's so good i know Ah, uh, awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, cool. Then I cannot wait to sit down after this, and I'm gonna come up with a big old faction list. That's I'm gonna oh, come yeah. up with the the map, uh, our our sort of area, or find a map, then roughly interpolate it, uh, forging it up, come up with some different ideas, come up with the different factions that are intervening in our lives, nobility hierarchy, kind of give them rough tiers, and uh, then and then let it let it all loose on y'all. Rocking. So good. Cool. Um, then with that, uh, is anything anything else we'd like, hey, let's get this done or should we get out of here? I think I think we're good to go. I think we're, yeah. Okay. So I know it's super late. Uh, Grant's on the East Coast, if you don't know. So like, that's amazing staying up this late. Things he does for games. Good thing I had all that caffeine before the stream. <laughs> Night coffee, man. All right. Uh, let's go around the horn one more time. Uh, Adam? Hey, I'm Adam. Uh, you can find me online at places like this and on Twitter. And I now have a Patreon for music stuff. So if you like the, the weird electronic-y things that Eric occasionally plays in this channel, uh, Patreon slash Blinks, B-L-I-N-K-S, is I post a new piece every Thursday. And sometimes they're weird and sometimes they're good and sometimes they're both. Uh, and yeah. And you get a, basically everything I've ever released is on there. So that's what's up with me. How about for you, Sage? Uh, yeah, I'm on Twitter, the bad website, old Fortran. Uh, I'll throw a link in the in chat. Um, and uh, you can also find, uh, actually, since we've last gamed, I've released a game on uh, itch.io. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to probably be putting several more things there. Uh, so that's probably a good uh, place to find my stuff, too. Um, yeah. How about you, Grant? 
Hey, you can find me on Twitter at Wise Bubba Grant. I've got a lot going on. Um, there's um, the Twitch producer for WebDM's Twitch channel. You can catch us on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, I'm a tabletop events director for a variety of conventions. There's a new one popping up next year in late October. Uh, that will be announced further down the line, but it will be in the greater Pennsylvania area. Um, and likewise, uh, I have a Kickstarter starting next month. Look for it to drop on October 17th. It will be a dark fairy tale campaign setting uh, that I think you will enjoy. Awesome. Cool. Then there's me. Um, I'm Eric Fulgaris everywhere. Uh, this is uh, super, super fun. Uh, sorry we have to wrap up for UVG, but I'm super excited for this game. Uh, we haven't talked about when the schedule is for this game and stuff right now. Uh, but we're thinking about starting it in a couple weeks on a like a, maybe like a Saturday-ish time. Uh, it would be better for us. I expect also to have some guests come in as well. Uh, I think that format fits well. In the meantime, um, yeah, just stay tuned. Uh, follow me on Twitter for, for the updates of this game. I'll, I'll keep everyone appraised about that. Uh, you can find me everywhere at Eric Fulkers. So that's it for us today. Uh, thank you all so much. And uh, we're going to get out of here. So, good night, everybody. Good night. Bye.